All right, guys, let's get into... Let's start with Jason Moralpez with multiple slams here, and he gets the KO with the slam. Now, this guy is a freaking amateur. This was a freaking amateur fight in Combat Championship 88. Universal Reality Combat Championship 88. M my apologies. At URCC 88, which is, I mean, even abbreviated. It's too long of a name. Multiple slams leading to the KO. He doesn't even have a topology page. I can't even highlight his record, his resume. But let's take a look at this. Look at that. He was pretty much already out. Boom. Boom. That one puts him out. That one put him out. You saw his neck was kind of all wobbly there. Boom. For good measure. Oh. Okay, one more time. One more time. It's just too good. It's too good. They're going full rampage. Because the guy slamming doesn't even have a topology page yet. Red corner doesn't even have a topology page yet. Another one. I think right there he was out for a sec. You saw how his neck was all floppy. Oh, then that left. Bro didn't even get paid to get KO'd. Manhandled, dude. All right, next fighter who got a sick knockout. Eliel Mota, 2-0 as a pro. And he's been fighting the same promotion, Budo Sento Championship. He wins with a quick knee. Let's fire it up. Throw more volume. He need to keep throwing that slow kick. And then... Oh. Oh. By the way, I haven't watched any of these ahead of time, other than the cards that I watched this weekend, like LFA 168 as well. Like, I know how that one ends, because I was there. Oh. <laughs> Early stoppage. <laughs> Dude, he was out. Out. Wow. A second pro MMA fight. What a knockout that was for Iliel Mota. All right, next. This is humbling for me. Our next two, we have two guys back to back Fury FC. That's right. Fury FC, pretty much since I started dogging it, has been putting together some, some pretty good shows, both on their Challenger series and on their numbered fights. And we have two back to back Fury FC knockouts here. First one coming from Jacoby Smith, 27 years old. He's out of Fortis MMA, five KO, TKO, zero submissions, two decisions, four no in Fury FC, three no in XFN, four and two, five and nine. But again, he's very new to mixed martial arts, so I shouldn't judge him too much. But uh, yeah, he has been crushing cans. Dare I say, at least he's fighting guys with experience, just guys that aren't that good. But apparently he had a wicked knockout, so let's take a look. He's like another high-level wrestler transitioning to MMA. Our first of two Fury finishes. What not a lucky And a backflip. A little left hook and a backflip there. Let's take a look at it, at it again. Next, Shane Wright. He is an amateur. He doesn't even have a page on Tapology yet. Back-to-back -back great finishes on the Fury FC 83 card. You guys know I rip Fury all the time, but they did put together a great card over the weekend. Third amateur fight. He lost his last one. He's getting back into the win column with a beautiful seven-second KO. Oh my god, he's he's freaking he's dying on the on the mat. Holy crap. Here we go. 
Dude, did you see the way his head moved? Fastest KO in Fury fighting championship history. It has to be though. Seven seconds. I know it was an amateur fight, but still, you can throw that into the, the record books. Never kick a naked low kick. Dude paid for it. Beautiful. All right, let's keep moving this one. I was live for this next one, guys. That's right. I was there. I watched this fight go down. Now, on paper, it was a little bit of a mismatch, I will say. It was journeyman versus young guy is essentially what it was. So I've seen this one before. But what was awesome about this one was it was USA versus Vietnam. And because the USA guy was from Wisconsin, everybody in Mystic Lake, Minnesota was rooting for the Vietnamese kid. They were booing the Wisconsin guy because the hate for Wisconsin, they were booing him, dude. Like, it was crazy. Antoine Ho, he does fight out of the MMA lab. He does train in the United States. But again, it was just so on brand Minnesotan that they were booing the sh out of the Wisconsin guy, even though he was American. Antoine Ho, 5 and 0 oh as a pro. 22 years of age. He's so young. Uh, he's fighting out of the MMA lab. Uh, Sean O'Malley has talked about him before either on his show with Tim or the Bromali show. Kendrick Glashman going into that fight, he was 9 and 8. So I looked at him and I was like, okay, yeah, like this kid's probably going to tune him up. But in like the first few minutes into the round, he didn't look out of place. Like he didn't look horrible. He wasn't bad, but yes, he was over committing to some of his shots. Clearly his like his grappling wasn't that great, but the kid in his post fight speech did say that like, yeah, this guy doesn't have a great resume, but he's fought some pretty decent guys on the regional. And like, I would have lost if I didn't take this training camp seriously compared to some of his other guys going up against a guy who's nine and eight compared to a two and one, two and two, zero and one. It was smart of him to kind of treat that as like that next big step, his, his little contender series fight, if you will. Good amateur career going seven and oh, let's take a look at his knockout. Third win of the year at LFA 168. And again, big shout out to Mystic Lake Casino. It was an awesome show. By the way, I got to meet uh, Gilbert Melendez. Awesome guy. And I got to meet the uh, like the president of LFA. They were just chilling at the casino after. And everyone was just hanging out at the bar. And they were super chill. Oh, well. oh my God. Dude. Beautiful well. step in left. You can hear that. Remains undefeated as well. We have to go down south. Where... The Canadian won in the main event. The Canadian beat the Boston boy in the main event. Let's go, baby. <laughs> but we also got this. Hassan Graham. Ladies and gentlemen, bouncing back from a loss in his last fight, the Bounty Hunter, two and one as a pro in mixed martial arts. Dude, Titan FC's put together some good cards as of late as well. I'm, I'm a big fan. Zero and one in the PFL. That's right. He lost in his PFL Challenger Series attempt. Lost via ground and pound in the first round. Bounced back this weekend. All right. Four and oh as an amateur, two and one as a pro after this weekend and in impressive fashion. Let's take a look. And again, big shout out to MMA News. They post their top 10. I wish I could go through every single one of them and more with you guys. That, that first right looked like it put him out and then he landed a left and another right or was it two rights after? Let's take a look again. Oh, dude, he... Timber! Timber. Oh, my God. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Out of those I shared, okay, we had Jason Moralpez with those slams. We had Eliel Mota with the knee. We had two Fury FC fights, the pro fighter 
Jacobe Smith with the first round finish with that nice punch. And we had Shane White on the amateur side of things, seven seconds with the right hand. We also had Anton Ho out of the MMA lab, LFA 168 with that beautiful step in left hook. And last but not least, in the heavyweight division, we had Hassan Graham rebounded from his PFL loss with a massive win in Cage Titan 61. Let me know how you rank these finishes as we close out September. And we're going to start doing these weekly. Definitely a special attention to the regional ones. But yeah, we're going to start doing these weekly top regional finishes of the week.